All right, today we're going to learn about cursed items. Uh, that is, action cards with the curse effect. Currently, there's only two in the game, so they're kind of a niche thing. Uh, cursed sword and cursed armor. Literally just cards that have the word cursed in the name. Now, these are pretty straightforward cards, actually, but if, you're, if you don't read them carefully, they can be a little confusing, especially if you don't understand how mechanics and Galatoo works. But let me break it down for you. So Cursed Sword is a dark attack that does two damage, and after you hurt, after you, it damages the target, the target becomes unable to harm anyone during the next turn. So, if you simply play Cursed Sword onto another player, three, two, one, go, they're not allowed to harm during the next turn. Harm in Galatoon includes both damage and negative status effects. So they will be forced to play defense or support during the next round. Now let's take a look at the other curse card, Cursed Armor. It has the same effect. Uh, if the person who is affected by the shield cannot harm another player during the same turn. So at first that seems counterintuitive. It's a strong shield 12, but if you use the shield on yourself, you're then cursed and not allowed to damage anyone during the next, not allowed to harm anyone during the next turn. But remember, in Galatoon, you can aim cards at different players. So instead of playing Cursed Armor to defend yourself, you can actually play this shield offensively, in a sense. 3, 2, 1, go. You play Cursed Armor onto an opponent. Why? Well, first, the shield. So it could be keeping that player alive and preventing a different player from scoring. Plus, it has the bonus effect that that player cannot harm anyone during the next turn. So you've cursed an opponent while block while point blocking another opponent. Curse Sword and Curse Shield also have two different combos that work together, but again, it could be a little confusing unless you read carefully. So Curse Sword can actually gain a triple power buff if the user played Cursed Armor on the previous turn. So remember the user is the person playing the card. I've had some confusion wondering like, wait, which card do you play first? So if if you're the user and you open your combo with cursed sword with cursed armor for your first turn, then on the next turn when you play cursed sword, it'll do triple damage because cursed armor was used by you during the previous turn. Now if you take a look at cursed armor, it also has a combo that goes the opposite direction. If the user played cursed sword on the previous turn, the user gains 4 HP, so it gets a healing buff. So if you do that the opposite direction, let's say you open with Cursed Sword to damage and curse an opponent, then on your next turn, if you play Cursed uh, Armor, no matter where you place the armor, it says the user gains 4 HP if you played Cursed Sword on the previous turn. So you don't have to curse yourself. Even if you're going after another player, that still keeps the combo so that you get that combo effect of gaining plus 4 HP after damaging the target. <clears throat> now to make this even sweeter, you could actually stack both of those combos together if you have more than one of each card. For instance, <clears throat> let's say... You open with Cursed Armor to block and curse an opponent. Then on your next turn, you play Cursed Sword. And remember, Cursed Sword is going to get triple power if you just played Cursed Armor. So this now goes up to uh, 6 damage Dark Attack against Light that crits to 12 damage. Now let's say you had a second copy of Cursed Armor. You then play Cursed Armor again and because you did, in fact, play Cursed Sword on the previous turn, you're going to get that plus 4 power bone, that plus 4 HP. And you can keep cycling back and forth. If you had another Cursed Sword, well, you did play Cursed Armor on the previous turn, so that's going to get triple power. So see, Cursed Armor and Cursed Sword combo into each other, so you could keep going back and forth if you have a way to recycle those cards or if you have multiple copies of these cards in your set. I want to show you another combo that's pretty interesting uh, that one of our players submitted online through the Galatoon Gamers Guild. If you're not part of the Galatoon Gamers Guild, by the way, be sure to join. That's our private Facebook group for uh, player discussions on Galatoon. So here's a fun combo. <clears throat> if you open with one of the cursed items, let's say, let's go with cursed armor. 
If you open with cursed armor, the opponent is unable, the opponent becomes cursed, right? So they have to, so you know they're not allowed to harm anyone on the next turn. That means they have to play either a shield, a boost, or a life. So they're much more likely to heal than they normally would be. So on your next turn, you're getting ready to play Cursed Sword. 3, 2, 1, go. And they played, surprise, surprise, a life action. <clears throat> so your Cursed Sword is going to do triple damage because you're following up with Cursed Armor. But you knew their harvest was coming and you anticipated it. So you can shut it down with Death Wish, converting their heal into an attack. This is a very mean time to use Death Wish because it combos really nicely with the Cursed items. Plus, you still get your uh, bonus from Cursed Sword. So now you've trapped them into a corner and you're doing 6 Stark damage plus the f damage conversion from the life that they played. But what if they don't play a life card? Because they could end up boosting or shielding. Well, there's a way around that, too. If you want to be really thorough with your Curse into Death Wish combo, uh, you could actually heal them just as an extra backup. So again, you open the combo with Cursed Armor or Cursed Sword. Either would work, but I personally like opening with Cursed Armor because then you can follow into the sword for more damage. So anyway, turn one, you use Cursed Armor on them. Turn two, you heal that opponent. So here are your possibilities. If you're healing that opponent and you know you have Death Wish, you know for sure you're going to be able to get an attack off by converting the heal that you put on the, to that opponent. So if they also throw down a heal, well then Death Wish actually converts all the heals on the table. So they'll take the attack that you converted and you'll uh, recoil their own life move onto themselves as well. So they'll be hitting... Uh, by two attacks on that turn. But if you're wrong and they end up uh, playing a shield or a boost, at least you're st still damaging them with your own heal combo. Now, the downside to playing this route, on one hand, you are forcing the. On one hand, for sure, you're going to be getting an attack off, but this would be breaking your combo if you had a second cursed item. Again, Lindsay is really nice for heal-based combos, uh, this is Lindsay Howard, uh, one of the characters from our Convergence expansion and a special crossover from OhioCon. She's actually based on OhioCon's mascot. But her special passive ability is that she boosts life actions by three. So if she plays a healing action onto a player, it's even stronger than usual. So she can do a stronger heal support or she could convert it into a stronger heal attack. Um, here's another fun combo too. Uh, that you can use with our special promo card that comes with Convergence, Charlie's Precious Tago. So you can add that into your Cursed Combo too. So let's say, turn one, you open with Cursed Armor and you block and curse that opponent. Now turn two, we're going to do the life strategy, knowing that the opponent's probably going to try to either heal, shield, or boost, but we're going to bet on them sh healing. Well, if we throw Charlie's Precious Tago into that combo, this is a heal card. We throw it onto that opponent. At the same time, that opponent did end up healing themselves. And then we can convert all of those on the table into Death Wish, just like we did before. But here's the beautiful thing that happens with Charlie's Precious Tago. So Death Wish is going to convert all of these heals into attacks. So the opponent who attempted to heal will now be attacking themselves and getting damaged. And Charlie's Precious Tago is only a heal one, but you'll convert it to an attack, and the effects stay the same. In this case, that is that they seal healing. So not only are they taking this damage from these life moves that would have healed them, Charlie's Tago is going to ensure that they're not allowed to heal again. Now in this particular case, this combo wouldn't work because Tekobot is a light type, and a light type attack isn't going to be able to harm a light type character. So definitely uh, be careful of the colors there. Here's just uh, one more combo I can show you with the cursed items. General Bering Kendall is a fan-inspired character who's part of our Convergence set. And he's kind of got a whole theme based on the cursed items. If you take a look at him, uh, he's very visually designed after these cards. And he's also visually designed 
after the real life player who inspired him. So you can actually kind of see that in his face. But uh, what's interesting about this character, he's an undead juggernaut. He's got really high overall stats, but the thing is, since he's undead, he's unable to play life actions ever. In fact, um, sorry, he, he can play life actions, but he is unaffected by life actions. So he can play life actions on other players, but if people play them on him, they don't do anything. Which is usually a bad thing, but not always. Uh, but here's another interesting power of his, Cursed Great Blade. The user can discard an action from his hand with the word curse in its name in order to triple the rating of this attack. So if you're playing his Cursed Great Blade and you have a cursed item in your hand, you have a choice to make. Would you rather play the cursed items on their own on a separate turn to build out more combos? Or would you like to burn up one of these to feed into your main attack to triple it up? So yeah, if I have cursed armor, I could burn my cursed armor in order to triple up my cursed great blade, which is now going to do base 9 dark damage. Critting against a light, that's 18 damage in one, mo in one move. Very powerful. But again, there's currently only two cursed items in the game. So it's fairly balanced. The luck that Baron is going to get one of these items is fairly low. And definitely during a game, while you see these cards circulating around, you want to do everything you can to keep these from getting into his hand. So make sure you knock out score and loot to keep these cursed items away from Baron because they're much more powerful in his hands. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, be on the lookout for these cursed items and how to use them. And we may come out with more cursed items and other sets later on. Uh, currently both Cursed Sword and Cursed Armor are part of our starter set, so have some fun with that and let me know what you come up with.